some of you wanted to listen to this podcast because you said, why I should give him a second chance. And you're like, just, you're like, yes. And you're sitting here listening to this, just dying for us to give you the ammunition you need to give some guy who doesn't deserve a second chance, yeah. a fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth chance. And you're like, Gary and Adam are about to tell me some things that I can use to be like, they said it was okay. No, we did not say that. Stop lying to yourself. That guy does not deserve the sixth, seventh, or eighth chance. Gary, over the years, one trend I've noticed with some of our clients is when they join Love Accelerator, they get all excited, they start meeting lots and lots of guys with this new empowered mindset of saying that magical four letter word, which is next and moving on to the next. But you've noticed this probably over the years that like some clients sometimes overuse that four letter word. They're just like next, 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 next. And they just are like constantly nexting when we're like, whoa, 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 whoa. Maybe we got to give that guy a second chance, right? So that's what we're going to be talking about today is why it is that sometimes we do need to give that second chance, that second look on that guy while dating. Which I think it's funny, right? Because you're right. I mean, there's some of the clients just get very into like this, like next syndrome almost where it's <laughs> yeah. empowering. It's an empowering yeah. feeling to be like, you're the one saying like, no, nope, not today. Um, and it's ironic yeah. because so many of our clients come in and it's, the thing that they struggle with at first. And a lot of the ones that turn into the over nexters, they're the ones that struggle with it at first. And then they're like, they're just so like into it. It's like, I don't want to hurt people's feelings. And then they figure out how to do it. And they realize it doesn't hurt the guy's <laughs> feelings as much as they thought. Right. And it's like, now they're starting to feel them. It's like, all right, I can do it. And they just get a little overly enthusiastic about it. And so it, it's an the, overcorrection sometimes. It's right. just like they get so empowered and they're like, I can meet so many other guys that I just need to find, you know, they almost get to that point again, like finding that perfect match. It's like, well, hold on. That guy you just nexted could have been the right guy for you. We just didn't give him enough time. Right. Because you don't want to be too picky. You don't want to accidentally next the wrong guy. And the fact of the matter is, if you want to look for a reason to next a guy, any guy, you can find one. Everybody's got a reason somewhere, right? Where it's like, oh, why I would you next like, me, Gary? What, what would you next about me? You're too damn handsome. You're too damn handsome. Oh, I can't come on. You. Oh, <laughs> that is such BS. You kidding me? You just, you, you got to say that because I pay the bills around here. Oh my God. But Not I, that I, I, <laughs> uh, I would never next the, you just so you know. I'm smart enough to know not to ask you why you would next me. So I'm just going to let it go. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> here's the, the hard thing with all of this is like these second, some guys, some things guys will do are totally nextable and they don't deserve a second chance, right? Yeah. Disrespect. Like they're, they're, they're mean, they're nasty. Like there's just, there's major red flags like, Oh, fine. But yeah. there are other things that guys do that. Like, I think sometimes we see with our clients and I think they're just sometimes just like a little too quick to move on and they might be missing out on something really great. Now, yeah. before we get into those things, I want to just kind of a word of warning. Like there's a little tough love maybe, but it's like dun, dun, dun. Some, some of you wanted to listen to this podcast because you said, why I should give them a second chance. And you're like, just, you're like, yes. And you're sitting here listening to this, just dying for us to give you the ammunition you need to give some guy who doesn't deserve a second chance yeah. A fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth chance. And you're like, Gary and Adam are about to tell me some things that I can use to be like, they said it was okay. No, we did not say that. Stop lying to yourself. That guy does not deserve the sixth, seventh, or eighth chance. There's a reason why you've gotten that Yeah, far. chances are right now, the guys that you want to give a second chance to, you're drawn to, are not going to be the guys that actually meet these criteria. Chances are it's going to be the guys that you don't want to give the second chance to are going to be these criteria. So don't get too excited here. <laughs> We're probably going to lose a lot of listeners right now. And they're like, what the hell, man? I thought that that guy who's separated for three months from his wife, he's been married to for 20 years. I could give him a second chance. It's like, nah, that's not happening today. It's going to be the more boring guys. Sorry. It's a little teaser. So we shouldn't give second, 
fourth, fifth chances to the guy who works on an oil rig who will be back in town in five months? No, 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 okay. we shouldn't. Okay. Nothing against oil riggers. We need them. We still need them until we're f- fully on renewables. We're not there yet. So, uh, but no, no, we're not going to be giving him a second chance. If he's still married, still lives with his wife. I've been hearing that one a lot. That's been coming up a lot lately on masterminds where these guys will, they say that they are divorced or they give the appearance. And then like by the second date, like, oh, just so you know, I'm still living with my ex-wife and we're just separated. It's like, what? Anyways, sounds married. Tangent. Have you been hearing that? Yeah. I'm like, oh, so he's yeah. married. Got it. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's literally what I say is like, wow, he sounds married. <laughs> he sounds married. Yeah. It's a weird little trend. A side that's, tangent. That's here, what that but. is. Um, no, we're not so giving okay. that guy a second chance. So not every guy deserves a second chance, but many of them do. And so here are three signs that the guy you're thinking about does deserve a second chance from you. The first one is and I hear this a lot on masterminds and talking to clients is he didn't ask me out. He doesn't like me. So I'm, I'm just going to like pay attention to to something else or someone else. Right. And so you're thinking that because he hasn't asked you out, he hasn't like overtly made gestures towards you to show his romantic interest. You're, you're saying in your head, he's not into me. He doesn't like me. And I think right. oftentimes that's wrong, particularly if he's willingly spending time with you, if he's finding excuses to talk to you, right? He does have interest. He is interested, but you got to think about this from his perspective. And so from a guy's perspective, what he's thinking is, I like her, but she's too good for me. Yep. He's intimidated. I like her. He's, yep. he's nervous. He's mm-hmm. scared to ask you out. Most guys... Nine, I would venture to say 90% of them have terrible, terrible game, for lack of a better term. Right. They don't know how to ask a woman out. They don't know what to do. They're super nervous. And you might perceive this as he's not interested in you because women actually, there's been a number of studies on this, psychologically underperceive uh, romantic interest from men. So chances are you're walking around and be like, no guys like me, no guys like me, when indeed they do. You're just not actually seeing it. Um, and all this leads to you to not giving him a second look. So Gary, what do we do in that circumstance? Yeah, I I think for it, it's important to realize that guys have feelings too, right? He doesn't want to get rejected. And so he doesn't want to like proposition you and like show romantic interest for you to be like, Ooh, gross, leave me alone. Um, and frankly, the other thing that's, that's important to just point out is he doesn't want to be me too, right? Like he doesn't want to like show romantic interest and be like, oh, he's a creep. He's hitting on me. And like, it, it, there's a whole bunch of things that guys think about, particularly like you said, the ones that don't have game, that aren't very accustomed to approaching women and all that kind of stuff. So the strategy you want to put into place is have a bigger welcome mat. Like go a little bit further showing your interest that you're welcoming advances from him. Like basically make it clear to him that you're not going to shoot him down. You're not going to embarrass him that you don't think you're too good for him. Make it clear, like, come on approach. Like, you know, it's like the, the person at the airport with the little wands, right? You're going to bring it in. Like, let's go. Come on in. And we always say, be easy to approach hard to attain. Like I want all of you to be flirtatious, social, put yourself out there, give those green light signals, those batons, at the airport, make them seen even in the darkest of nights with the clouds and the rain, like be seen. But then once he sees that signal, he starts pursuing you, be hard to attain and don't do it by playing games or anything like that. I mean, we've talked about this plenty in the podcast and everything we teach with the little love steps on how to do that. But like, don't be afraid to be flirtatious. Don't be afraid to put that out there because us guys, we've been rejected in our life. I don't care if he's Brad Pitt, he's been rejected in his life enough to want to protect that ego. And this is especially true in like certain circumstances, like professional circumstances. Like if you work together or, you know, your, your friend, you're in a friend group, you really, and those are most scenarios like that, um, where these situations happen, he's going to be really cautious. So just give him those green light signals, touch, laugh at his jokes, give him a lot of attention when he's in the room. Just not only like energetically, but eye contact, all of these things just give him that kind of like glaring light, like, 
hey, I'm interested. If you ask me out, it's going to be a yes. Yeah. I mean, just make the assumption that, you know, some guys when it comes to this are a little dense. Like they're just not going to pick up the signals or they just need a clear, 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 clear signal so that they know they're not going to get mortified and embarrassed. Right. Because they don't they don't want that either. Right. Um, I I remember like when I was dating. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt, but I remember like when I was dating a lot before I learned all this stuff, before I became a coach and I would go out with some women and they would be really quiet and reserved. And I would leave that date and be like, oh, she just really didn't like me. And cause I always assume that women have it all figured out. And like, for whatever reason, like us men are just like idiots. Like, I don't know. And I learned later in life now that I've been coaching women for over a decade that maybe she did like me. She was just a little bit nervous or she was just a little bit off or wasn't quite there yet. And so I feel like both sides think that the other side has it all figured out and they don't ever just assume everyone is kind of clueless, honestly. And th- cause that is kind of the reality of it. Everyone is a little mm-hmm. bit clueless. And definitely be willing to give that guy a second chance if he's not quite asking you out, if he's not making it happen, especially if it's, like I said, in a professional circumstance. Yeah, and I think that's exactly right. It's like either people are clueless or they're just out of practice. And I think that's Mm -hmm. important, right? Because it actually brings us really nicely to the next one, which is, you know, you're out with a guy and he has really bad first date nerves. So the first date, the first meetup, the first time you're talking to him, it just doesn't go well. Um, And you have to realize like the guys with whom it doesn't go well, part of the reason why it's not going well is, you know, it could just be clueless. Like you said, it could just be like, they haven't done this that much. And so those first date problems, those like little points of like stress. And it's like, it's not quite syncing up as well as you would hope. It's easy to think like, nah, like uh, next, I want to move on to the next guy. But I think those guys deserve a second chance. Um, Particularly like if he's not talking much, Right. Just kind of the exact scenario you just pointed out. It's like, oh, if this person's not talking very much, they're not really into me. They're kind of boring. Maybe they're too shy or whatever. I think it's important to realize strategically, like guys are accustomed to women in mixed sex dyads leading the conversation. And so as the woman there, like feel more free to ask more questions. Like yeah. inquiring minds want to know, like ask him questions about his life, about his background, like whatever it is, but like, don't be afraid to take the lead because ironically, the other thing that is a major nextable offense for a lot of women is the guy that talks about himself too much. And I think mm. that's one I probably hear about more. And to me, it's like, the most, it's the easiest second chance to give for a guy because to me, it's super defensible because guys aren't used to carrying the conversation. So if it gets quiet, they get nervous and then they just start filling the air with whatever, just so there's not awkward silence and they're going to fill the air with a topic they know a lot about, which is themselves. And so he's just putting it all out there. And some guys treat these things like job interviews and they're like, I got to give you my entire resume. I got to let you know all these things about me. And a lot of women like, Oh gosh, he's a narcissist. He's so into himself next. Right. Yeah, I, I think the the way to sometimes look at this is looking at it from the alternative lens, which is think about the guys who are really good on a first date, where you leave that first date with just like just tingles down your spine. You're so turned on. You're so attracted to them. They were so funny, so charming, so charismatic. The types of guys that can do that on a first date are the types of guys who go on lots of first dates. Like they are very well practiced. It's a learnable skill. Those are guys that likely sleep with lots of women. And hey, if that's their prerogative, that's fine. Just know that, that those, you get good at that by doing it a lot. And so if a guy is kind of shy in a first date, he's not talking a lot, he's just kind of like uh, withdrawn. For all you know, when you go on a second date, he's going to open up. Because the second date is where he can finally just kind of take the dating mask off a little bit, be a little bit more comfortable around you, feel like just like not quite as nervous. And it's likely you'll get to know a very different human being. And then the guys who just talk too much, who are trying to brag, yeah, a lot of guys think that that's the way to get a girl. But once again, you get to know them. It's almost like this. What does this all lead us to? Almost like a first date doesn't give you that many signals about whether or not it's going to be a great long-term romantic partner. Like 
yes, there are some things you'll see on a first date where it's like, oh God, never again. Like there's no way I will ever go out with this person. Fine. That's a next. But barring that, it's almost like give him a second chance because you're right. not even seeing who this person is. There's not enough signal there. It's too soon. Yeah, because I think that first date, it, it's – I think for right or for wrong, people kind of perceive it like a sales job. Like I got to sell myself. And so guys see it like I'm going to sell myself by showing how awesome I am. And so that's where like a lot of that talking comes from. And, and again, like if they're good at it, it means they've done it. It's like the salespeople that are really good that you don't realize they're selling things, like they they got that way because they've done it a lot. You're Other right. guys, not so much. And I think what you said about like that second date is so important because – from a guy's perspective, once you get to the second date, it's like, okay, I don't have to sell as much anymore because clearly they're already interested. And so now right. it's a little bit less salesy and it's a little bit more like, let's actually get to know each other. Um, and, and I think that's a real important perspective shift. Um, I will just say, you know, and I, I say, I've said this a lot to women recently on, on in our sessions, they'll complain about guys that are talking a lot. And they're like, and I, this woman said, I sat there for an hour just listening to him go on and on and <laughs> on. And I'm like, that had to suck. And she's like, yeah. it was horrible, horrible. And then I asked, I said to her, well, were you there? She goes, what do you mean was I there? I'm like, well, were you there? She's like, yeah. I'm like, well, why didn't you stop him? <laughs> like at some point, like you have some responsibility too to take a little bit of agency in the situation. Like you don't have to just passively sit there and listen to some dude drone on for an hour. Like say, hey, I really loved hearing about that. Like cut in, change yeah. the topic of conversation, ask questions or like cut in and be like, I have, a, I have something to say about that. Like, again, like boundaries are important. What you just did by letting him talk for an hour straight is basically say like, I have no boundaries. I'll just let you do whatever you want. Like, and that's gonna mm. be okay. Um, which obviously is a problem. So take a I've little, take a little responsibility. I've it's always tough. been the person to like let a lot of other people talk. And I, I, I think that's because I've been trained in my twenties and early thirties to like ask questions about people. Cause I know that if someone starts talking about themselves, chances are they're going to like you in return, but it can backfire sometimes and get people to just talk the entire time. And then like, they'll leave the conversation be like, wow, Adam, I really enjoyed talking to you. It's like, yeah, you don't know anything about me. Like you literally didn't ask me a question, but whatever, I listened to you. And um, I, I almost like resonate with that. And it's something I honestly still need to work on. I'm very bad about talking about myself. It's interesting. Are you gonna talk about yourself? I bet you're a big no. question asker. I I am a questioner. And like, I, I would not be upset by someone talking about themselves for a whole entire hour, but I wouldn't just let them monologue. I would be like yeah. peppering with questions and prompts and like all that kind of thing. Cause I find people fascinating. And so right. like, I love people telling me things and like asking good questions. And I, I like that part talking. I know me, like, I don't know. I don't need to hear more about me. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it, it is the best way to get someone to like you is to ask them questions. But I think to your point now, like a nuanced discussion about this is like redirect the conversation to something that's interesting to you. Right. Like if I'm sitting across from a woman and all she's talking about, the perfect example would be, and this would happen to me a lot when I was dating is I would go on a first date with a woman. She'd be talking a lot about work and just like talking and talking and talking. And like, that's fine. But I know that that's not building much of a connection between the two of us and actually puts her into like a little bit of masculine energy as well and all that stuff. So I'll, I'll just be like, you know, I'd love to hear about work, but honestly, the, what do you like to do when you're not working? Like, Right. Well, if you could live anywhere in the world and do any activity every single day, what would you do and where would you live? Like right. redirection, make it more interesting. And, you know, and so I think that's where you can take control of those moments when that's happening. And again, still, it's like once you go on the second date and the third date and fourth date, the whole conversational chemistry completely changes. Like it really does. I have no idea what Jessica and I talked about on the first date we went on, but I guarantee it like had almost no signal to what the relationship is now. Like I couldn't, I wish I could watch that, but like, is there really any signal at that point in our lives, who we were to what we are now? I mean, a little bit, maybe the chemistry for sure, but it's just chemistry. It's like, you don't even learn compatibility really on a first date. 
you know? Yeah, I mean, really. I, I, think, it, I think the one thing you can get out of it, it's less about what they, it's are they interested in taking turns, sharing the stage, and are they curious? Do they ask a lot of questions? I yeah. think that all that stuff is important. But all that said, that is important, but it's also a skill and it's not something people always realize because mm -hmm. people a lot of times default to following scripts of which is to say they, they follow these patterns of behavior that they think they're, they should be following. So that woman that's talking about her job on the first date or the guys that monologue about their career on the first date, it's not necessarily that they want to do that, but it does kind of feel like what you should do on a first date or what's most mm. typical on a first date, which is all of which is to say, like you keep saying, it's like that first date doesn't have a lot of signal. There's not a lot to go on. And like, that's why yeah. the second chance is really, really important. Yeah. Yeah. I, I guess my final, and then we can move on. My final thought is that I think there's signal there, but most of the signals about what you don't want, like if it's a definite no, you can get a definite no, but a definite yes is non-existent on a first date. And if it's a maybe, you're not sure, give him a second date. When in doubt, give him a second date. If by the end of the second date, it's still like a very like low, maybe not really at all. That's where you're like, maybe give him a third date. If it's like, it's still a maybe give him a third date. And if it progresses and you're like, oh, I'm liking him more and more. Actually, the thing he said on his fourth date and when he laughed and smiled and touched my hand, that kind of gave me some, you know, little feels and you just let it kind of develop. And that is where I would say 90% of our clients relationships, what it what it results from very rarely does it result from like the first date is like the most magnetic thing in the mm -hmm. world. Most of our clients are in the 50s, 60s and 70s and beyond. It's like, it's just a little bit different dating uh, in that season of life as well. And so I just think, yeah, I mean, I've, I've said everything I have to say about this, I guess, but yeah. that's, that's how I feel about it. That's really how it kind of progresses. Yeah. We give way too much credit to like the quick spark and not enough to the slow burn. The slow burn like in, in dating is like, you want to set yourself up for long-term successful, fulfilling relationships. Guess what those are? Those are slow burns too. Like, and yeah. so sometimes how you date is it's going to set you up for how you're going to have your relationship. And so, you know, you want to adjust and strategize accordingly, I think. Um, and Adam so Adam and Gary, again, being the romance killers, that should be, can we do like hashtag romance killers? That's probably not going to help with our marketing very much. Will you, it? you can do romance. I, I just want to do hashtag date smarter. I like that better. Date smarter. <laughs> I want to be the romance killer with like some like a bandana <laughs> and some like crazy like like thug stuff. I don't know. What, what could See, make me like really cool? This is important for all the listeners to know about Adam. Adam loves to dress up. I do. I do. I do. Big fan of dressing up. So I'm also like kind of gangster on the side. Big into <laughs> Tupac. Big. I mean, I'm Tupac fan through and through. So I'm the romance killer. <laughs> Straight up, yo. Straight up. <laughs> All right, moving on. <laughs> Which is a perfect segue to the last reason to give a guy a second chance is he said something dumb. He might have just said straight up, yo. Like he said something dumb. <laughs> He might have just started talking about Tupac and said that he's the romance killer on a first date. And you're like, oh, no, I'm not having this. But who knows? Maybe he was just being an idiot. Like I was just being an idiot. Yeah. And so, you know, I would not use him saying something dumb or off color or a little a little insensitive as a, as a nextable offense. Because I'm just – guys are going to do this. Guys say dumb things. And he's probably for the rest of your life, if you end up in a long-term relationship, he's going to continue on occasion to say dumb things where he's going to say something. You're going to shake your head and be like, no, <laughs> no. people say like, dumb things, you know, like, yeah. look, I'm, this is coming from the romance killer is like when new clients meet a guy and they're really excited about him. They're like, oh, he's perfect. We've gone on six dates together and there's nothing I don't like about him. I'm like, just wait, he's going to yep. say something dumb. Something is going to happen that you're really, really fundamentally not going to like, like really, really won't like. Same thing with women when men are dating women. Like there's just certain moments where you're like, wow, I really don't like this part of this human being. Assume it's there. Now, sometimes it's it's much 
larger of a issue. And sometimes it's like, okay, I just really don't like that, but I can see past it. And so I just think you got to prepare yourself for that. And sometimes that might happen on a first date when in reality, like he just put his foot in his mouth. So like, give him a second chance. Now, obviously there are certain circumstances where he says something really, really bad. Right. And that's the next offense. But like, it's going to happen at some point that you're going to find something out about this guy that you don't like. And sometimes it might happen on a first date. So just kind of give him a second chance. See what happens. Yeah, and I think some of this, like he said something dumb, some of it's first date, some of it's like you said, date five, date six, like it, it can be like, you know, each other a little bit. Um, I think it's especially important with guys when they say something dumb to like, if your guy is accustomed to spending a lot of time around other guys, he's just infinitely more likely to say dumb things around you because yeah. guys around guys, like I know when, when I hung around a lot of guys, a lot, I, I said a lot more dumb because it's like your audience is so much more like into saying dumb things and finding dumb things funny. And so like, point. yeah, you're just, like your audience is different. And then it's like you, you come around, you're, you're with your, your girlfriend or your wife. And now you're like, you say something else dumb that like back with your guys would have been, would have killed with them. And she's like, are you an idiot? Right. It's like, uh, nope. I just misread the room. That's all I did. <laughs> Guys are really disgusting creatures. Like when we're just with other guys, like uh, yeah. bo- like we have our boys trip every year, ski trip. I like prepare for that. And I'm like, oh, this is going to get like really, really disgusting, raunchy, horrible. Like just the things Ben said. And it seems to be getting worse every year, not better as we're getting older. You'd think it would like be getting better, but we're just getting worse. Like we're like really <laughs> brutal. We're, we're mean to each other in like a playful way. And right. like – it's just the way guys talk. And that's such a good point is if he's been single for any period, like a decent amount of time, he's only hanging out with guys on his free time. Yeah. That energy is just very, very different. It can be extremely off putting. And he, he, he's, he's just gonna be more likely to say dumb things. And I think he's trying yeah. to be funny. And I think that's important to realize and it, it might be wrong, but this is a great opportunity to very early in your relationship, establish boundaries. And you just be boundaries. like, he says something that's inappropriate. We're like, hey, that's not okay. I don't find that funny. And just yeah. as a matter of fact, not in a chastising, you're a bad person kind of way, just as a matter of fact, like, yeah, sorry, I, I just don't find that funny. Yeah. He's he like, oh, see it. And then see how he responds. If he can ca- recalibrate himself and like he's working on, if he just keeps at it over and over again, like you have to take that under advisement too. That means it's, he's probably just going to keep doing it. And it's like, is that now that might be a nextable offense? That that's I love that you said that this has been on my mind this whole time because I actually talked about that on a mastermind recently with a client who is dating this guy for like two months and he said something really boneheaded and she really didn't like it. It hurt her feelings. And I'm like, well, did you talk to him about it? She said, yeah, I explained to him that it really hurt my feelings and I really didn't appreciate it. And he immediately apologized. And so far he hasn't said anything else like, but I'm still thinking about ending with him. I'm like, this is great news. So he responded to your boundaries and he, he has actually respected your boundaries and that's better. Now you've gotten Mm -hmm. a good, that's a good signal. Now a bad signal would be, of course, he's like, whatever, you're being stupid. And you, you know, I, what I said wasn't stupid. You're being stupid. Now that's a next offense. So it's much more about the response to your boundaries than it is him overstepping boundaries. You know, sometimes people, People will naturally overstep your boundaries, especially in the early stages of dating, because you don't know where those boundaries exist. You don't know what right. they are. Yet. They're a different human being. So when he does overstep them, set them appropriately, see how he responds. If he responds well, that's a keeper. That's what I'm talking about. Give that guy a second chance, 100%. This is a whole other podcast, but I think that point about boundaries like, is so important because so many times people have boundaries and they're invisible. No one knows what they are. And so they get upset when their partner messes up and oversteps them. And they're like, how dare they do that? It's like, wait a second. You have these rules and boundaries that they don't know exist. Like, how can you fault them for missing it? Right. And it's communicate. I mean, we say this all the time, but communication is so important. And, And like in that case, the guy messed up. He said he was sorry. He adjusted. That's fantastic because that's what future relationship is going to be like because people are going to keep messing up. Like we're imperfect. There's going to be mess ups. It's how you respond. That's really the key. So 
All right, so action step, everyone listening right now, go through your phone, go through your messages. Guys that you've nexted over the past two months, are there any guys that maybe it's time to give them a second chance, a second date? Go for it. See what happens. Who knows? That you could find the guy of your dreams just by listening to this podcast and making it happen. Because I guarantee if you're dating right now, there's a guy that maybe we overlooked, said next a little too quickly. Give them that chance and see where it goes.